Hey everybody, Carolina Tony coming to you from today from the beach at Fort Pierce, Florida. We are here at the home of the Navy SEALs Training Center. It got started around 1943, right after the bombing on Pearl Harbor. Soldiers gathered from some other camps across the United States that came here to train to be Navy SEALs. And we're going to look at a lot of stuff that they use in their training, a lot of the stuff that they're using now today. And we're going to do that, but right after this station identification. This is a Navy Frogman with an M4 rifle on his back. The sign says assault rifle, but I don't call it assault rifle because any rifle is an assault rifle if you use it against somebody. These night vision goggles. Okay, I'm ready. Are you? This one here is really neat. Check out the grappling hook on the end of it. On April 8, 2009, the Marsk, Alabama cargo ship was captured by four Somalian pirates. There was a movie made a few years back called Captain Phillips. This is the actual rescue lifeboat that Captain Phillips was in. And as you can see, right up here, that's the window that the Navy's snipers shot and killed the Somalian pirate and save the ship. Look at me. I'm the captain now. One minute, I kill all your friends. One minute. You come with us. We're not kill everybody. Don't get in there. Gotta get him off the ship. Now like this. See the windows that were shot out by the snipers. And there's a clip from the movie. We are an unarmed breaker. We have the potential privacy situation. And right there is where he was killed at. In this very boat. This Black Hawk helicopter was used in the rescue of Jessica Buchanan and Paul Hagen. On January the 25th, 2012, Navy SEALs conducted a high altitude, high opening parachute insertion 12 miles north of a small town in Aldo, which resulted in the deaths of nine Somalian pirates. And this is the actual Black Hawk helicopter. So I'm sitting in the back seat of a Navy Black Hawk helicopter. How cool. Where the movie going? This is a Desert Patrol vehicle. 200 horsepower. And will go about 80 miles an hour. It's a military dune buggy. This is a magnetic ship climbing device that would actually pull along the beside a ship with this device, clamp it to the ship's hull, and use it to gain access aboard.
I did a video here a few months back on the Berlin Wall in Spartanburg. Two pieces are in Spartanburg, South Carolina. But here's another piece. It's where Ronald Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, take that wall down. Here is some underwater breathing gear used by Navy frogmen. Started training Navy frogmen here at Fort Pierce during World War II, right here on the beach. This is the very beach that the Navy SEALs trained on in 1943. All while German U-boats were out there somewhere. You know they were. And here are all type of Navy SEAL knives. Here is a medical kit. It's called an M5 medical bag used by Stuart Kerr, Staff Sergeant 2 during Iraq. Some Navy frogmen. Here's something that you may find a little interesting. It's the Ace of Spades. Two years later, Saigon fell. Over those last two years, without American and Allied combat forces in the region. Here's something else you may find interesting. The Ace of Spades. It was widely believed that the Vietnamese traditions held the symbolism of the spade to mean death and ill fortune, the ace of spades was left behind to notify the enemy who was responsible. And this is a device that would be used to strangle someone to death. Here are some detonators that would be used to explode and demolish things. It's called a green dry suit. The frogman's wearing. And here are some American armaments. This is a patrol boat used on the rivers. And it's got some heavy bulletproof guarding around, machine gun in the front. Here's another one. Lots of river patrol boats out here. It's called a MK-8 Model Zero Navy SEAL delivery vehicle. This is a wet submersible. The divers would actually get inside of here and hook their octopuses up to those uh, gauges there so they could breathe. And actually, all this would be filled with water so they could stealthily go long distances. Information on the number of personnel it can carry, its operation depths and speed and distance is still classified. So nobody knows. We just know that they can get in there and travel. There's some of the tanks. This here was something that Navy frogmen trained for here at Fort Pierce, these Apollo space capsules that they would train that when these things landed in the ocean, the Navy frogmen would swim out and 
start the uh, flotation device that would go around the bottom to keep it afloat until the astronauts could be brought abo above. Astronauts could be brought aboard a ship. This is a special operations craft. It could cruise at speeds about 55 knots and carry up to 12 passengers. It was used for special missions that required speed. And this is called the button UOES3. This would deliver divers probably at great distances and they could get out under the water through a hatch kind of like this. Well, actually this is the hatch that they would get out. This is called the MK5 Special Operations Vehicle Craft. It was used to support Navy SEALs. It was capable of doing a lot of fast maneuvering and getting the SEALs where they needed to be, but getting them there fast. Let's go aboard. We're going up the steps here, but the boat didn't typically have the steps. I don't know if you see to the side there was a ramp. This thing was designed to, loca to launch rubber watercraft off the back while at speed. And Navy SEALs would actually ride in comfort in these things. These chairs were heavily padded and reclined. And while they were on the choppy seas, I imagine it would be really comfortable for them. I don't know where they steer this thing at. Perhaps with this joystick. This sculpture is called Never Out of the Fight. It depicts the evolution of the Navy Special Warfare featured a Vietnam era frogman, a contemporary SEAL warrior, and his modern day canine counterpart. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I hope you've enjoyed our trip to the Navy SEALs Museum. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to go down here and subscribe and share with a friend. But until next time, y'all have a good day.